Hi everyone, my name is Belinda and I'm a candidate attorney with Bookbinder Business Law, which is a law firm based in Botswana, Khabarone. I am joined by Msia Kindiano. Msia is a partner at Bookbinder Business Law and he specializes in commercial dispute resolution. And we will be discussing exactly that this evening. Hi, Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. So, um, see, yeah, let's just hit the ground running. Um, no pressure. That, Sounds intimidating. <laughs> no pressure. So, first of all, I'd like for you to just share um, the forms of dispute resolution in Botswana and just give a brief overview of um, dispute resolution in Botswana. Well, it falls into basically two broad categories. Um, you have what I would call the court system, which is the conventional system. And then you have alternative dispute resolution, which can broadly be divided into adjudication, mediation, and arbitration. A lot of commercial dispute resolution is um, in the conventional um, system dealt with before the high court and if there's appeals the the, the court of appeal and um, on the alternative dispute resolution side um, in arbitration so somebody listening on to our conversation this evening would wonder what the benefits of either route is the conventional system is not without its merits um, it is a constitutionally created grounded system of dispute resolution um, which is manned by judges of the high court and the court of appeal who are extremely experienced um, and um, there is there's basically an entire framework created to make decisions of those courts um, effective and effectual. The alternative dispute resolution space um, is literally that, an alternative in the sense that it's supposed to be much more efficient than the, 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 the court system provides for. So one of the things that um, I, I suppose we're going to focus on today is the effects of um, COVID-19 on the entire system. And I think it is in those effects that you can see how different streams are. Right, great. And, you know, if, if I needed a lawyer to assist me with uh, a matter that requires resolution, uh, the first thing that would come to my mind is the costs that come with it. So Absolutely. how would how are the costs of going the alternative dispute resolution comparable to those uh, of the conventional court processes? On the face of it, it would appear that alternative dispute resolution might be more expensive. However, I would argue that it is either competitively um, comparable or even cheaper when you account for the value of time. Mm. So unfortunately, um, for reasons that are very complex and structural in nature, the court system is very, very slow. Um, an action can take anything from three to five years to be from, from inception to complete resolution, to getting a judgment out of the high court. That does not even account for the additional time that a, an appeal would take. Um, now, during this entire process, you as a client are getting um, fee notes from your attorneys. Um, notionally, if you succeed, um, you would get an order for costs, which is a mechanism that allows you to make a recovery on your expenditure. The high court rules have a tariff, which has recently been updated to make it more market related, but it is still a far cry from what your attorney is going to charge you in your agreement with him versus what the court system would allow you to recover. I would still say you're probably looking at, rec if you were to get a full recovery, you're probably looking at between 50 and maybe 70% if you are lucky. So in my view, if you were to account for the value of time, which as we know is 
the lifeblood of executive existence and decision making, I would say that much as the, the alternative dispute resolution route might look more expensive, it is in fact cheaper. Right. But of course, there's exceptions. <laughs> there is no, there's no hard and fast rules in anything. What we're talking about here is broad trends. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Monsieur. No, um, <laughs> I'm still with you. So I do note that there was, even though Webex was introduced to try and alleviate the issues of um, contact court, mm. um, it was an inefficiency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And having noted that the court process is traditionally prolonged. Mm. So there's always a delay of a number of years, mm. five years or so. Would you say that one of the effects of COVID-19 in the courts was that justice was delayed? Yes. Um, I, I, I can imagine from the perspective of litigants before court that that would be the the general sense or the general feeling. I would not blame anyone for thinking or feeling that. However, I do think it would be an unfair criticism if one considers the circumstances in which the entire planet was affected with. Um, I think various governments all over the world tried different measures to keep things going as best they could. And let's not forget that we all had conflicting scientific information about what was good, what was not good, what was possible, what was not possible. Look, I think everyone did the best that they could, but I would not argue with someone who felt that 2019 and 2020 were lost years and that things did not move as much as they could have. And I, I'm not sure that that would be a fair criticism. That's all I'm saying. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. And just on the question of, on the issue of a virtual courtroom, right? It is true, you and I know this, everybody knows this, that one of the good things that came out of COVID-19 was the realization that we do not have to do things physically and yeah. manually 100 percent. right and we do not ha always have to conduct court proceedings manually or any other thing meetings right? whatever yeah we we can get by very well with technological advances and i'm sure you might know that court proceedings in neighboring countries mm. like south africa mm. were conducted quite seamlessly absolutely. via teams absolutely and one would wonder Teams is such a common uh, resource. Mm. Why couldn't we do that? Why Webex, mm. having realized the inefficiency, we mm. had two years to realize this. Is it a disinterest to resolve this situation? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, but I, I do know that in the period you're making reference to, there was limited resources which had to be prioritized and the priority was the health of people. The priority was getting the vaccines in. Um, the priority was um, running the infrastructure as best possible in a situation in which the economy had effectively ground to a halt. Um, look, we, we in our industry have to be pragmatic about where we sit in the value chain and uh, um, I, I don't think it would be a fair criticism to say that there was disinterest. Mm -hmm. we, with the benefit of 2020 vision, we can always comment or perhaps criticize certain decisions, but that's 2020 hindsight. Um, the reality is that the people who are making decisions on the ground made the decisions for the reasons that they did. And um, it might not have been a perfect solution, but it was a solution. I, I can't say anything more than that. Yeah, thank you, Monsieur. I think, um, in my view at least, dispute resolution is a means to an end, mm. right? Mm. And we want to make sure that, in the very least, the end is done in a very efficient manner. Mm. And what do you think is 
the next best step for dispute resolution now? I think infrastructure is a key word. Um, and I'm not necessarily even focused on um, virtual hearings and so on and so forth, but you mentioned neighboring countries. Both Zimbabwe and South Africa have um, basically dispensed with physical filing at court and have an online system um, that is efficient and functional. I have seen people in my office here file documents in South Africa. Um, it is a beautiful thing to see. That would really be an important thing for us, I think, to think about in, in, in terms of infrastructure. Um, and to add to that, I think, you know, going back to something we were talking about earlier, to provide the technologies and which would enable optionality to be possible. If a judge wants to run a virtual courtroom, the infrastructure should be there to allow that. At the moment, it's not. So I think the, the intention was there. Um, the measures taken can be criticized or they can be lauded, but if the basic infrastructure is missing, all the efforts unfortunately might prove to be for naught. So when you ask about the next best thing that we would have realized as um, a revelation coming out of our experience with C-19, I think infrastructure is a key word in my, right. in my assessment, in my view. All right. And I think we can all appreciate that every experience is important because every experience makes you realize um, what you have what you need mm -hmm. and what you don't need. Yeah. And who would have realized that we could have a digital system for the courts? For anything. You know? I mean, look, I think, I think the key word is optionality. Different people, different generations, different personality types might make different choices. Right. I think what we all learned, the entire planet learned was that there is more than leaving your house at six o'clock in the morning, getting to the office at eight o'clock, staying there until 5 p.m. There is more to this equation than your physical presence at work. Right. There is more to this equation than whining and dining your clients. Right. There's more to this equation than um, setting up uh, physical seminars for your clients. Right. Um, I mean, I ran, I, I happen to um, be involved with the Law Society of Botswana, and I assist um, with the civil procedure um, bar examination. And I have been, I, you know, through the pandemic, we were running um, tutorials and examinations virtually. Mm -hmm. That is not something we were even thinking about before things you know, fell apart. So I think the important word here is optionality. Mm -hmm. and, and I mentioned all those different generations, different personality types, different people on purpose because we don't all work the same way. We don't want to work the same way. Mm -hmm. I am a homebody. I'm an introvert. I prefer to be in my little corner of the world where I can focus and work in a certain way. So I kind of personally have a hybrid way of working. Mm -hmm. Some people prefer to be at the office for various reasons. Some people prefer, prefer to be at home or off site. I think the key word here is optionality. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, a, that's progress. That's a good thing. We've learned something new that we didn't know two years ago. That's true. I mean, and I'm quite certain that as technology advances, as we learn more of what we can do and what the world can do, uh, we, there's a lot more to, to see and 100%. there's a lot more coming. So mm. I'm quite sure that where we're at now, mm. even if we had the in infrastructure now, mm. um, there's more to look forward to. Thank you for your time, Monsieur. I appreciate your time. It was Thank great you. having this conversation with you. Thank you. And I hope to see more of you. We'll talk about that. I'm a homebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Good night.